Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Joe, and in this video, we're going to be modeling this bottle right here. I got a screen grab of this from Pinterest, and we're just going to be figuring it out, building it out. It's an organic shape, which is something that is not my strongest suit. So let's just go. I'm going to start with bringing in a cylinder. And for this cylinder, I want it to be as low poly as possible. I think eight vertices. No, let's do 14. So I'm just going to clear that cylinder and I'm going to bring in a 14 vertices cylinder. So I'm just going to scale this down, turn on my transparency back and I'll bring this up to this platform a little bit. So what I want to do right now is just get the general silhouette of the bottle first before I get into doing the getting the details. So right now I'll just clear all those faces so that we can freely extrude uh vertices without having to be constrained to the z-axis and what I will do next is just select all of this and then so I'll bring this up here scale it up and then I would extrude and I'll bring it to this part and make sure that I get as tight as possible to the general form of the bottle so I'll bring it up here again and I would scale down and then I will extrude again and then scale on the X and Y axis I'm not scaling on the Z axis just so I make sure I maintain the circular top of the cylinder right here so I'm going to go to the next spot AZ and then we can scale this and make sure that it's tracked exactly to the silhouette of the bottle right here so we can just scale this and i'll easy again and i'll scale this um sorry i'm going to be a little bit fast i really want to get through the entire the entire modeling in a short time so that the tutorial is not so long so i'll scale this right here let's scale this up and i'll easy and then scale it in Then from here i can es extrude along the surface and extrude on the z axis so we have the general form of the bottle let me inspect the shape one more time to make sure that we have our vertices where i need them to be and i think we are we are good on that something i probably want to do is to make sure that each of these vertices land on this line so that when i'm using my knife tool to cut out this shape it's going to follow through properly and I won't have to do too many cleanups. So what I want to do first is let me bring this along the X axis just so it lines up properly. I'll bring this out a bit. Then I can bring this down a bit. Let me see while I'm making all this movement down to make sure that the general shape of the bottle is not tampered with. So I'm just going to make those changes. Uh, maybe this change, I won't make this change because this messes up with the shape of the bottle so i'm going to leave that and then this let me just move this along the x axis and see if that messes up with the shape of the bottle it does a little bit but i can leave with that so what i'm going to do next is remove the subdivision that i just added so i can go from here with my knife tool activated click on this right here i'll click on this click on this what i'm trying to do is just trace out the basic shape of the of this um inset here with the knife tool so we have the basic shape and we have the line running through right here so this is the line okay something i want to do first before going any further is make sure I don't have to work twice. So I'm going to cut this model into half like this. I'm going to cut the model into half like so and then on this side I'm going to clear out one part so that I can use my mirror modifier to mirror whatever I'm doing on one side to the other side. Thank you. 
So right here, what I want to do next is take this shape. I'm going to reselect our edge loop right here that I just created. And what I want to do is to slide those edges. So now I'm using another add-on to create this edge slide. I'm just going to right click and slide edge. And this is what we're going to get right here. So we have a clean edge loop on this side, but there's an issue here that I want to resolve. So what I want to do is select all of this and merge at last, merge at last. So we have one straight line running through this place. So I'm going to make that selection again and make my sliding edge. So you're just going to help us help create a clean loop around this shape that we've created right here. So I'm going to slide the other way. And we see that we have a clean loop going through this shape. So what I want to do next is to create this inset. You can notice there's an inset here. Um, let me look for it. You see there's an inset around this place. So I want to select all of these faces that we have here. So with my face selection tool, I'll just select all of these faces. And then with all of these faces selected, I can come really close and then I will use my extrude faces along normal. I will extrude one little one just to create a holding loop right there because I'll be using the subdivision surface modifier soon. And then I would extrude one that would be huge. Pause. Just so that I can create the inserts properly. And then I will extrude another one that will serve as a holding. So right now we have our shape that we need. What I want to do next is to apply our subdivision and see how this shape holds against the subdivision. So I'm going to add the subdivision and see what it's looking like. I'm going to shade smooth. And I think we have a pretty good shape here. What I think is probably missing is this weird shading that is here. So in order to tackle that weird shading, I'm just going to select all of these faces that's already selected for us. And I would just, um, I will probably insert that shape a bit. So we have an inset there, cool, nice. But our mirror modifier seems to be malfunctioning. And that's because we have the subdivision first before the mirror modifier so i'm just going to change the stack over there and it's fixed something i want to do also is inspect the shape and the shading of this bottle i think i will probably need more subdivision on this just so that it's smoother so if i take this up to two i think it works better and it's fine so we are just quickly going to i'm going to reduce the subdivision first turn off the subdivision and then i want to get this outer shape now to get this outer shape, we're just going to do the same thing we did for this shape right here. I'm just going to bring this with double G down here. And then with my knife tool, same thing. I want to make sure I bring these vertices as close as possible. Just so that we don't have any weird, um, any weird vertices while we're using the knife tool. So I'm just going to change transparency and we can now use our knife tool to cut out the shape that we need. We are going to complete the course right here, but something that I am not okay with is this triangle right here. So in order to create this triangle, I will select this, select this, and then merge at last so that all three would be merged at this point right here. So we have this, and then we have an end gun here that I can resolve by using a knife tool to just bring this to the side and just create a holding edge over there. So we have this going on. What I want to do is we'll go back to selecting our loop again and we'll use our edge slide function to create that beveled cushion that we created last time. So same thing. I think this add-on is called slide edge. You can get it. Um, let me look for it. Slide. Exactly. This is it. Slide edge is the name of the add-on. You can get it really good to in order to make clean meshes like this. So I can just right click and slide edge and I will let me slide towards 
this side. I see the slide is working except this slide right here. And I think because of the um, amount of vertices that I will, that are forming a pole here. So something I want to do to fix that is go out of the transparency mode and just slide this with double G. Now we have this working properly and um, I want to clean up this mesh a bit so I can double G out, out into the surface right here. And then something I want to do is probably use a knife tool to just cut in here like this so that we can have a clean end gun. We have, no, we can have a clean cord. We have a cord, cord, cord right here. Unlike before where we have triangle and just a cord. So now we have this evenly distributed and it's looking good. I think same thing can apply to this. I can just add hardware of this. I can add a cut right here and take the cut over to this side. Then if I resolve this, let me see what that's going to look like. Okay, I think we are cool on what this looks like. But then we have a weird shading issue here. I can select all and recalculate the normal. It's not working. If it's not working, I'm going to introduce a weighted normal to it. Uh, weighted normal. Also not working. Apply auto smooth. Okay, it's not working. I think the shading issue over here is gone. So I'm just going to select our inner. What's going on here? Okay, I think we need to complete this cut over here. So I'll just select the inner shapes that we have here. I hope I am still recording. Okay, I'm recording. Okay, so I'm just going to select this inner shape. And what I want to do is go to our front view and then go close enough so we can extrude along normal slightly to create a holding edge. Then create extrude again and then extrude lightly. So we have this shape inside here. Something that I, I think I see from the model itself is that there's a little bit of a, bell, a bulge out. So I'm going to go into the bottle and then insert. And then I'll extrude this along the normal outward like this. So we have this shape. Something I want to do is check the subdivision and see how that's working with the bottle. Is it holding the shape? Is it making it weird? I think the only place it's making it weird right now is around here. And that's because we don't have a holding edge for this one. So I can just select and maybe I want to bevel it. I'm thinking of beveling it. Let's bevel it and see what it looks like. Okay, with the bevel, I think I think it works with the bevel. Let me increase the subdivision and see how it works. Okay, there's a weird shade in here. Let me see what's causing that. I think this pole is actually not working properly. But how can I resolve this? Um, I add an edge loop here. I think it's going to mess with the shape. So I don't want to add an edge loop over there. Something that I can do is... Add one edge loop like this and it's crazy it's causing a mess over here so i don't add an edge loop over there um how can i fix this i think it's already fixed the only thing i'm seeing right now is that there's a weird shade in here also so i can select this edge over here and dissolve the edge let me see if it actually holds up definitely doesn't hold up let me select all of this edges right here and then gx to bring it out so that it holds the form a bit better and then we have that something i also want to do that i've noticed in the bottle is this shape right here so to create that we can just come to our edit mode and select the faces that form that shape so these faces right here they form the shape So we have this as a separate element and what I want to do next is to, um, I want to apply the mirror modifier and I want to apply, don't to apply the subdivision. No, I don't apply the subdivision. So what I can do is just sell, change to my face select mode, select all and I can extrude along the normal. Just extrude along the normal. 
I see a shape forming, but it's not tight enough. It feels a bit detached from the bottle. So what I want to do is bring in an edge look. And then no, I think our beefing up of that mesh was a bit too much. So I can just bring it out a bit. I think this is accurate. Let me do that again. Okay, this is accurate. Then I can bevel this part just to make this shape a bit sharper and look like it's part of this mesh right here. So we have this beautiful shape that serves up as a good grip for the bottle. Something I'm seeing, I'm seeing a weird shade in here so I can just come here and try to just make things further away from each other and a bit neater just so we don't have any weird shading. I think we're still having a weird shading here and it's probably as a result of this edge. Let me see if I dissolve this. Does it affect anything? No. And we have a good shading. So what I want to do is just go into texturing. We have a weird shade in here. Let me see what's causing it. If I do this. Okay, we're good. We're good. But this is, this is left hanging. Well, how can I resolve this? Can I add merge to last? Will it work? I think it works. So something I also want to do is check the edge loop on this side. Does it look properly? I think we're good on this side. Um, I also want to create a cover so I can duplicate this edge, separate that selection, and then I'll select this edge loop right here. So when I select those, I can scale it up and then extrude on the Z axis. E S. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I think I probably want to apply the mirror modifier on this so I can ES, ES, and then fill it up. So we have this and it looks good. Um, this, I think there's a weird shading issue that I need to fix on this side. So what I want to do, I just want to create an entire edge loop. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to dissolve this one right here and we have something separate from that. I think it's going to resolve the shading issue that we have here. So I'm just going to apply a mirror, I say mirror modifier. I'm going to apply a solidify modifier to this. And I think, I think we should be good on that. Then I would should start doing some material work. So we see that it, we have a blue, blue setup right here. So I'm just going to use our picker tool and pick a color and then move to material preview. Let's see what we have. I think we need to bring in a little bit of glossiness. So I'm going to reduce the roughness first and then I'm going to bring all the specularity. So we'll have a little bit of shine. What I'm going to do it's just um, next. I'm going to select all of these faces right here. Right? So we have all these faces selected. What I want to do next is to create another um, material for it. So I'm just going to come add a new material. And then this is just going to be stack black. Right? And we're going to have an increased roughness. Let me just bring this up a bit. So we have a little bit of gray. And we have that and we see that there's um an extra loop that needs to have that black so we're going to switch over to the edit mode go to select and we'll click select more and then we'll assign that shader so we have we have something nice i the same we're going to apply to this right here and we'll click select select more and we'll repeat that action come down to material and assign so I think this material is good. I'm going to bring back this and then I'll link this material to it. And for the cap, I'm just going to use a basic metallic material, reduce roughness, and will bring up the specular. And for this color, I just, I think I just want to make this a little bit more saturated. And I think that's it. That's about it, guys. So that's it, guys. So long. And until I see you in the next one. Peace.